Hey there, welcome to Outbuilding. I'm going to do a really quick how-to on the about every two-year maintenance that you would do for an HRV. That's a heat recovery ventilator. This is a Zender Comfo Air 200, and I'm pretty sure that they're pretty similar. I haven't been in other ones, but this one I've done the maintenance on before. This is something that an installer might do when they first set it up, or if you have routine maintenance for your, your device, you might have somebody coming out and doing it. However, I think that's pretty expensive and sometimes hard to schedule. So I'm going to show you. It's not very hard to do. It's something you could do yourself and do it about every two years. This is separate from the filters, which you change depending on your air quality and other things more frequently. I do them twice a year here, and there's a really fine filter that we use for, um, especially in our smoky season. We live in the Northwest, and when we get wildfires, it, it, it helps a lot with reducing the smoke particulate in the house. And then there's another filter that keeps the device clean from anything that goes out through the house. These are neat devices. They take air from outside, whatever temperature it is, and they exchange it for air on the inside and they switch the temperature between the two of them. So there's a heat exchanger in there that switches out. Like if it's really cold outside, it'll take that air and rather than pumping cold air into your house to provide fresh air in the house, it'll switch out the heat with that that's being expelled. And so you get, you get very good efficiency of the heat exchange as you're circulating air. And in a really tight house, like this modern house that we have, we need to have fresh air being pumped in because otherwise it would actually get really stale and funky in here. One side benefit of these is because they're taking typically cooler air outside in the winter, which doesn't hold a lot of moisture because it's cool and, they, and it comes inside and it can gather up a bunch of moisture because the heated interior of the building is much warmer. And then when that air exchange goes back out and it gets cooled off again, it condenses. So this acts as sort of a whole house dehumidif dehumidifier as it operates in its normal way. So there's a drain trap here that is just a drain loop and then it goes out and dumps into a drain. And I keep an eye on that. That's in my garage sink and I keep an eye on that and just make sure that it's dripping when it's moist out or when it's cold out. And that indicates to me that that, that isn't plugged or anything wrong with that. So typically you want to check that tube and make sure that that's, that's flowing. And I know that is. So I'm going to first, I'm going to unplug the device. And you can hear it getting quieter. One of the ways I know it's time to do this is this thing tends to get a little bit louder when I think I think it's just working a little bit hard against the filters. I mean, against the, um, the anything that's clogging it. So these are the two filter zones. The red one on the bottom here, for, in the way we've got it installed, it depends on how you have this thing set up, is the one that's taking the air from the outside and filtering it as it comes in. And this, I, I change out every six months. It's, I'm in between that right now. I'm kind of at three months. And so you can see there's some bugs in here. I'll just take an air compressor and I'll just blow this out because we already use this for the remaining three months. That one goes on the bottom. The one on the top is the one that takes the air from the inside and cleans it so that it doesn't clog up the air exchanger inside. So it should be fairly clean, and it is. It's just, I'll, I'll also blow that one out, but that's just any cat hair or any dust or fine, fine particles in there that's coming from the house getting into the system. So with that cleaned out, you can I can see right now there's some there's some bugs here, and I've got I can feel cool air coming in from outside. It's blowing in, so I'm gonna crack this thing open with the power off, and we'll take a look inside. All right, with those six screws out, I can just open it up. You can see. In my case, and it depends, it can be mounted at sort of upside down or right side up, depending on the system and just how you've, your installer put it in. But this is where our, our cool air is coming in from outside. And it's, it's, this isn't as bad as it's been in the past. I'll bring the vacuum up and I'll, I'll vacuum this out. And I just want to check the route from there and on in and make sure that it's not obstructed. And this actually looks pretty good. The one on top here, which is coming from the outside of the house or the inside of the house and going out isn't bad at all. So inside here is this heat exchanger, and this is the piece I want to take out and we'll kind of clean and make sure that it's going. And it's going to probably drip a little bit because it's got some water in it from that condensation that goes on. So there's two screws that hold it in. So there's those two big screws up there, and then there's two more screws down here, small screws, and your device might be slightly different, so you just need to look to see what's holding that air exchanger in. There it comes. Okay. 
So this is just sort of a little tray that catches the water and then the water goes down and out that, that pipe. So you may want to check that to see if it's, if it's actually letting water through. Mine, I can see water in mine and I've got a bucket there to hold it while I try to set this aside without having to dump the water out. Okay. Now the next piece is this heat exchanger and this is the part that can come out and it may drip when you do it. So if you have a bucket nearby, that's helpful. There are four little tabs that hold it in. They just, they just twist out side to side to let that free and then you can pull it out. So just, just give it a, a little snug and it slides out on rails. There, so this is, this is the heat exchanger. And I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna clean it out elsewhere, but I'm gonna set it aside for now. So each of these fans has a handful of screws that... So each of these fans has a, a set of screws that holds it in place. And so you just wanna take them out one at a time, one fan at a time, and uh, make sure that, that the fan is clean and there's no, like, insects or leaves or anything in there that might impede the fan from spinning properly. So you can see this isn't too bad. It's actually way cleaner than last time I looked in here. There's a little bit of um, residue on the bottom there. I'll grab a towel and I'll clean that a little bit up on top there, but it's really not too bad. And it's, this is my intake right here coming in from outside. So that's not too bad. I'm going to grab a towel and clean that up. Okay, so with a towel, I can just scrub this out. And it's kind of interesting, I think, I don't know if this is true, but it seems as though the first time I cleaned this was soon after we built the house and there was a lot of process things like new woods and plaster and other things in the house that probably imparted a lot of water. So this was a lot messier and kind of moldy almost when I first did this. And I've had plenty of moisture and rain in the last winter when I'm filming this. and. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. So I think that was some of that. It was just residual from the house. So the, since that's the intake, I've got a little bit of just um, leaves and insects and other, other things that have just blown in. So I'm just cleaning back there with a wet rag, just a damp rag, I'm just basically dusting it. Check back there. It all looks pretty good. Same thing down in this little intake area where the air comes in and then with that done you can just go ahead and put the uh, this is a temperature sensor so you want to be kind of careful about that that just measures the in incoming air temperature and the outcoming outgoing air temperature and so then you can just replace these three screws and you can do the exact same thing on the tops the, these are symmetric so the the top ones can look very similar you can clean out that fan as well You'll probably find the one from the outside to be a little bit messier than the inside, unless you have like a lot of pets or something in your house that's creating a lot of air airborne um, dirt. So the top fan in my case here is the same thing. It's really only just two screws that hold it on. The two that are surrounding this, this white fan part. There again, it's just a little bit dusty in there. You look at the blades of the fan and make sure there's nothing, they're not like all dust bunnied and obstructed. These look really pretty good. And then you can close that back up. Then I'm just going to use compressed air to clear out these dust bunnies. I'll still want to replace that, but at least it'll 
extend the life a little bit while I've got it out. This next part's going to depend a whole lot on how your system is set up in your house, but like in, in my case, I can pull out. So you can see this is kind of messy. This is the intake. And so I can look down the pipe and inspect it to make sure it looks good and it looks, it looks fine in there. But I'm going to take the air compressor and I'm just going to blow out this intake because that's where all the, that's where all the ex exterior mess comes in. That's actually dirty enough. I'm going to scrub it up inside in, in a sink. All right, so with that scrubbed up, I can just put that back in. And yours is, these are all gonna be different on different houses, but that's how ours works here. For me, the output of this is on the other side of the house and I can't get to it easily without a ladder, but I can at least check it and see how it looks. And it looks fine there, if not a little bit dirty or moldy coming out right where it comes out. Okay, so now it's time to clean the heat exchanger. And this thing is, um, they say you want to do it in the direction of the, uh, against the direction of airflow. So I think the air is coming in from the bottom and going up through it. And so I'm going to push it down the other way. And the way to do it is just to run water through it. They, they do say that if it's green or blue like this, it's okay to wash it. If it's all white, you're not supposed to wash it. So that instruction, it says hot water. And I'm just going to run that through it. I don't know if I'll be able to see what comes out the other side. Yeah, I can see it. Doesn't look particularly dirty, but I'm just gonna basically rinse it out. I'll let that drip out. If I did this again, I'd probably do this first just so that it could drip out while I'm cleaning out the fans. All right, once the, the uh, exchanger has sort of dripped dry, I don't have to be completely dry because it's gonna have air running through it. It's gonna dry itself out when it's running, but get us just so it's not dripping. And then it slides back in, in the little grooves. seats in there well. Remember we cleaned the we cleaned the top and the bottom and then when you're putting it back in just don't forget to push down these those four tabs and lock the heat exchanger back into position before you put the cover on. We're going to put our panel back on. In my case it dumped out some water but not too much. And there's little keyways on the sides that kind of you'll want to coordinate to push the, the uh, exchanger all the way in. And then there's the two lower screws. So when you're putting the cover back on, there's two holes. There's one that's in the center of the panel and one that's offset from the center. The first ones that hold this, just this inner cover on go in the offset ones. The center holes are used by the outer door to close it up. And then just go ahead and put in the six outer screws to close up the outer door. Okay, and the last thing to do is slide your filters in. I blew those out so they'll last me until I do my switch over at the six month interval. And those are keyed so you can't put them in the wrong way. And then there's just these little rubber caps that go over them. And you should be able to plug it back in. And there it goes. You can probably hear gurgling and that's that's air. There's a slight differential between the house 
and the uh, outside. And so when the, the pump is running, that differential is showing up as little a little bubble going through this water. This leg will hopefully fill with water. If it doesn't, I can manually fill it. But as, as soon as it gets a little bit of an air trap in here, that won't gurgle anymore. But if you first turn it on and it's gurgling, you might be a little surprised to hear that. That's just because when I pulled the lid off, it dumped all the water out of this tube. But as long as it's got a little P-trap tube and a little, you know, a, a trap of, of uh, water in there, it won't it won't let that that differential of air through. It's just a slight difference between the inside and the outside of the house that's causing that little little gurgle. So hopefully you found that useful. My channel is called Outbuilding Info and it's about building things and both at the, the Northwest Coast and also in our in my workshop. You may not be interested in those things, but hopefully you found this thing useful. It's part of just, I'm putting up how-tos of very, various house maintenance things as I encounter them as well. If you're not interested in that stuff and you don't want to subscribe, please do me a favor and just click the like button or leave a comment. It would really help the algorithm or whatever it is um, promote people to come see my regular channel. And if you haven't had a chance, take a look at some of the other videos. You might find them interesting. Thanks again. Take care.